So welcome everybody to another Living Life Naturally podcast. And today I'm thrilled to have Lynn Bowman with me. I'm especially thrilled because Lynn spells her name the same way I do. At one time, there were not many of us around, but Lynn tells me there are more of us now. So that's yes. exciting for us. Yes. So uh, Lynn is actually the author and get this because I love this. Brownies for Breakfast is her book. And it's actually a cookbook for diabetics and the people who love them, but it also will serve so many other types of people. So this is a bestseller on Amazon with a five star rating. It's a diabetic cookbook that you'll actually enjoy reading and using. It's frank, complete, simple. Your favorite sweets and comfort foods reimagined as whole food, plant based, sugar free low carb, dairy free, gluten free, which is really needed these days. So it's a great fun read, one of the best cookbooks that you'll have on your shelves, whether you're diabetic, pre-diabetic, or even if you have some other kind of health issues. It tells us everything that we need to know about sugar substitutes, dairy free baking, no carb thickeners, gluten free options, plant based protein, as well as things like stress, sleep, um, shopping, equipping your kitchen, all in the straightforward, no BS language. Lynn has also been featured at women's expos throughout the country, and she speaks on subjects that include grooming for government, kitchen table culture, community planning, and the gift of diabetes. And with a lifelong interest in healthy living, she did tee up with Deidre Hall, the actress, to publish Deidre Hall's Kitchen Close-Up in 2010 and Deidre Hall's How Does She Do It in 2012. And in a previous life, she worked with Silicon Valley companies as a creative director, winning national awards. She was creative director at E&J Gallo Winery, advertising manager at Redkin, one of my favorite products. <laughs> um, she held various other positions with agencies and clients in San Jose, Los Angeles, and the East Coast. And she's also worked as an actress, makeup artist, screen writing illustrator, legal journalist, and television. So she's very, very well-rounded in having done a lot of things. So we're just lucky that she has landed on this whole healthy living to where she can help people with things like diabetes and more. So welcome to the show, Lynn. We're thrilled to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. And of course, all of those jobs, when you say them, they sound a little crazy, but in those days we did what we could do. I mean, you know, you got jobs, right? You went out and whatever someone would hire you to do, you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and part of that was having grown up in Southern California in the middle of the film industry, all my friends were doing movies and modeling and various things. So um, that was the community that I was in. And so that's what I did. Um, and then years later and many events later, I wound up in Silicon Valley raising kids. This book is also in no small part because I was a single mother of three children, mm. overstressed, overworked. So my, sure. my superpower was putting a meal on the table in 15 minutes. I mean, it was, it was quick, whatever it was. And I also wanted it to be healthy. I was a mom and I wanted my kids eating good stuff. And, and then I also had the interest in keeping myself healthy. So, so this has evolved over the years. And I, I so much want to share the message with people that the sooner you start, the better. Um, because so many of the issues that we have in our 50s, 60s, 70s, and I'm 75, as you know, Lynn, and so that's a lot of what I love to talk with people about. This is what 75 looks like. Um, I, I came to the podcast from my workout. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, that's, that's how we're doing 75 these days, if we can. But what's allowed me to do that is I knew in my 40s that I was a diabetic. 
Most people mm -hmm. who develop type two diabetes don't know it. And, it, and they, because there are no symptoms that are obvious. And anyway, you've got headaches and you have hormone things and so on. So your blood glucose tends to fall by the wayside. And by the time people understand that they have a problem, they've had that problem for years and damage has been done to your internal organs. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the other big reason I wrote the book is because we all have a sweet tooth, don't we? I mean, I certainly do. <laughs> almost everybody does. Uh, and why are people driving into Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks every day? It's not for coffee, it's for sugar. You know, uh, it's, it's all sweet, it's all sugar. Yes. So uh, I wanted to make it possible for people to quit sugar, to get off and not give up anything, to actually get something better food, better recipes, better tasting. It looks better on the table. The only thing I'm going to ask you to do is cook a little bit. <laughs> you, have to, you have to do something in your kitchen to make this work. But I mean, it's blender, you know, uh, throw it in the blender and cook. It's throw it on the pan and throw it in the oven. There's nothing fancy about this. And I think it's important because there are a couple of generations of people out there who have really never cooked. They never had to cook. They have been driving through mm -hmm. their whole lives. Yes. Mom drove them through and now they're driving their kids through because who has time? It's, it's so hard for people in families or family groups or even among your friends to do everything you're expected to do nowadays. So it's just true. hard. Yes. So. And, and so for many of these people who have been brought up in that environment, um, I know one of the hardest things to get them to understand is, number one, that you can do this quickly and easily, and number two, you still can enjoy your food even though you're eating healthy food. So often we think about healthy food as being boring or being... Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really sad. I mean, I, there are recipes in here for donuts that I promise you are better than the donuts you're driving through for. They have more flavor that, it, because so many people are accustomed to just sweet. It's like intensely sweet. And it, for example, everyone is talking now because fall is here about pumpkin spice oh, this or pumpkin spice that. The book has a lot of pumpkin spice. It's a great flavor, but not if it's just a sugary thing in coffee. Mm. Uh, I would love for you to try some of the recipes here. For example, the donut recipe has pumpkins, nut butter, pumpkin spice, no flour, no sugar, no butter. It's, it's but, but you're eating this wonderful, beautiful to look at yummy donut. Mm. And it's a meal. It's a healthy meal meal, but you have to make it. You can't drive through and get it, <laughs> but it's easy. It's six ingredients. It's put it in the oven, freeze some so you can pull them out. Plus moms, what a great way to throw breakfast at a kid. Want a donut, right? <laughs> yes. What kid doesn't want a pink donut with sprinkles on it? You don't need to tell them that it's made out of pumpkin and nut butter. <laughs> Just show them the donut. You're done. And hence brownies for breakfast. The brownies are also made from pumpkin and nut butter and monk fruit sweetener, which if you haven't tried it, it's great. Um, there are other sweeteners that I talk a lot about in the book that if it's been a while since you tried to substitute, the, the landscape has changed. There are some really good sweeteners out there no calories, no blood sugar reaction, nothing. So you can make cakes, cookies, donuts. I have a recipe for lemon curd, which, and you're oh, uh, British. Love it. Yes. So many of us who grew up with British grandmothers or, or moms have uh, this passionate love for lemon curd. I'm not sure why. Why is that such a I, evocative? I 
I don't know, but that's very interesting you say that, and I'll have to look at your book to see how you yes, you will. make it, because actually at Christmas now, it's a tradition for my family. Um, my son loves lemon curd pies, and... Lynn, you can make lemon curd pies from the recipe in my book with no sugar, no butter, no eggs, no dairy. Awesome. So what it is, is, is there's a recipe for a nut crust. And of course, we all know if you're interested in health, nuts are great for you. Yes. They are super yes. for you. It's good fat, it's good protein. So I show you how to make a beautiful nut crust into which you can put different fillings. One of the fillings that you can do is a, this lemon curd, which is made from lemon juice, um, sweetener. Do I put vanilla in it? I think I might put vanilla in it. And, and then uh, something which has a funny name, but once you get to know it, you're gonna love it. It's called glucomannan. It's konjac fruit. It has no flavor. It's a thickener. So instead of cornstarch or eggs, you use glucomannan, which you can get online. It's not hard to find. And what happens is the lemon curd is more lemony mm -hmm. and more intensely flavorful than grandma's was but it doesn't have eggs. It doesn't have sugar. It's all good nutrition. It's just lemon juice, basically thickened. It's fantastic. Oh, turmeric, which you know is a super healthy thing to eat. And it just enhances the color of the lemon. You don't taste the turmeric, but it's in there. So is that a sacrifice? I mean, I want you to make that recipe and then tell me if you feel deprived in any way. Um, brownies, my brownies, uh, I promise you are thicker, gooier, yummier than a, any brownie you've ever had. And they hold up well, they get better in the fridge and they're a meal. They're a healthy meal. Awesome. And I'm assuming when you researched your book, you found some very interesting information, um, on Tell us about how you came up with some of this. Well, um, it, there, is a, there are a lot of stories. Um, I, I, it took me three years to do the book. I had it three quarters done. And I went to a conference in Oakland called the Plantricians Conference. And this was a thousand MDs from all over the world mm. who devote themselves to healing with food and who are as a result, and some names you might know, Dean Ornish was there, um, you know, it was a lot of the big names in plant, whole food, plant-based nutrition. So I was excited to, to, and I took some stuff from my book and I wanted to show it to people. And I sat through PowerPoints from eight in the morning until eight at night for five days, which anyone who knows me knows that uh, that was a miracle, but I was absolutely transfixed because here were surgeons showing their slides, telling their stories and talking about healing, reversing diabetes, reversing heart disease. And I had always believed as many others do that diabetes is about carbs. And so that was the way I had eaten, which is not a bad thing, you know, to limit your carbs and be cautious of the quality of the carbs that you're eating. That was not bad. But what I learned was that the mechanism that's really the problem is animal fat cells blocking the absorption of glucose into your muscles. And I was like, wait, animal mm. fat? Huh? Because those of us who have approached healthy eating with a super high protein, you know, eggs, meat, chicken, people, people thinking chicken is the healthy. I, I, I was, was uh, disavowed. <laughs> I was changed. And this was not one doctor or two doctors. It was a thousand who wow. are operating on children, opening them up for various reasons and finding their veins and their arteries full of fat, full of, mm -hmm. full of um, animal fat. And 
I live in an area that is um, kind of an epicenter for what we're now calling regenerative agriculture, where animals are being raised, but they're being grass fed. They're not being put in pens. They're not being fed corn. Um, they are being rotated on the land so that the land isn't damaged and so on and so forth. So I don't know that I'm ready to tell other people never eat animal food again. I am ready to tell you, please don't eat anything that is factory farmed. Don't, and chicken, it is, it, if it's factory farmed, it's not good food. And that's what the country is eating. Every one of those fast food places is factory farm chicken. And I'm, I make jokes about it in the, in the book. If you know the chicken's name, if you know the chicken's farmer's name, you're good. Eat those eggs. You know? And if you have to eat a chicken, eat a chicken who was raised in a place that you would approve of. But at this Plantrician's Conference, I had to go home and rewrite the book. And on the way home, my husband picked me up, um, my patient husband. And I said, okay, I'm vegan now. And, you know, kind of looking for a response as many of us have, many of us have been through this in some way or another. I'm vegetarian now. I said, okay, I'm vegan now. And he said, okay, I'm in. So you got to love that. Right. Yeah. And so we did an experiment, a six month experiment. And of course, at the end of it, and I had just had my numbers done at the end of that six month experiment, guess what? The hemoglobin yeah. A1C count was down. Everything looked really good. And my physician, with whom I've argued and argued over the years about a number of things, said, you know, Lynn, that just doesn't happen in people your age. Just doesn't happen. Well, I'm here to tell you, it does. I did it. And I'm continuing to do it. And it's not one thing. You know, it's, it's doing some exercise. It's Ooh. sleeping. And you know this, Lynn, it, it, food and sleep are very tightly related. Uh, and you're a health coach and, and you know that any one piece of this, the exercise, the sleep, the food, it's, that's not enough. It's, it's trying to look at your whole life right. and make all of it support you in the best way it can. Um, so if you're eating healthy stuff at midnight, <laughs> it's, you know, and then laying in bed, after, that's not going to do it, um, vegan or not. So yes, um, the thing that I learned that was maybe the most momentous was I am not eating animal products anymore, with the exception of salmon and shrimp. Shrimp I keep in the freezer. It's so easy to pull out for protein and um, it's not particularly bad for you. It's okay. And I, I don't know if shrimps ever have first names or the, anything. And I, I, can't, I can't deal with that. But um, salmon has so much of a health benefit and it is delicious. And there's a recipe in the book for what I call simple salmon easy way to make it, doesn't stink up the kitchen. You don't overcook it. It's a wonderful meal and I recommend it. So I'm a pescatarian now um, and um, I've, I've chosen that and it seems to be working fine for me. I recommend it for people who like salmon and other uh, fresh fish. But um, the, the main thing was that I, I made that switch to whole, food, plant-based nutrition, and walked away uh, in community with those thousand docs um, who have seen the results in their work. And um, I, it, I'm, I'm proselytizing. If there's anything that you personally, each of us personally can do to help the planet, to help our community, to help ourselves stop eating farm, uh, factory farm products, any kind. Right. Just stop now. Uh, and you can, and you're not really giving up anything except 
Yes, if you're accustomed to spending no time in the kitchen, if you're accustomed to just ordering in, driving through, you have to, you have to give up, as it were, some time to prepare some food. But you're not going to get health. You will not be healthy unless you do that. And do you, uh, I don't know what you tell your, your uh, patients, Lynn, but that's how, how I've arrived. It's like no way around this. If there's no pill, uh, there's no regimen, you know, you have to source your food from healthy sources and then you have to prepare it in a healthy way. And then you need to sit down with people. If you have people, if you don't have people, mm, find one or two, if you can, <laughs> you know, go down the hall, knock on a door, go out on the street, find someone. Because another reality is we should not be eating alone. And you've got people out in your audience going, wait, that's health advice? Yes, that's health advice. Uh, eating alone is a problem for people. Loneliness is epidemic in this country, epidemic. And what they call the diseases of loneliness. You know about this. And Much of course, more. especially with the whole pandemic thing, I mean, it's just yes. thrown a wrinkle into people's social lives. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, we were laughing when I first came on, you're my social life. <laughs> okay. uh, my whole social life is Zoom calls now. Um, it, it, but happily, I do have a magnolia tree in front of my farmhouse where people could come and sit distanced um, if they're willing to do so and have a visit. But, and yes, I'm lucky, I can grow food. I have raised beds, but I talk in the book and uh, in my YouTubes, and you probably do too, about the importance of raising a little bit of food yourself, just some pots, put a tomato plant in a pot, have some herbs, they're beautiful, they're decorative, and the food that you grow is the best tasting food you'll eat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. So you did mention talking about loneliness and not eating alone. There is this whole thing at the moment where we have lost this family dining culture. Yes. And it's just gone by the, the wayside. And that's so sad because that's another pillar of our health. It's absolutely, it's a pillar of our culture and our health. And I talk about that a lot in, I talk about table. Um, and I have the photographs for those of you who, who like looking at other people's homes. This book features my kitchen, my dining area and so on, because I, I can't separate those things. I want you to eat beautifully. I want you to eat happily. Uh, and I want you to associate food with happiness and beauty not deprivation, you know, not, not some sort of um, thing that you have to do. I want you to enjoy every bite. And so for me, that's sitting down and it doesn't have to be fancy or expensive, but you, you do have to put some thought into it at times. And I'm a great one for bragging about the table that I bought with six chairs for $75, really, true story, and put some paint on it. It's now in my kitchen. Um, I, I love salvaging things and scavenging things, and I know a lot of other people do as well. And you can make a beautiful home, even if it's small and humble and um, limited in some way, make every inch of it that you can your own uh, and make it what you can enjoy. And to me, that has to include a table. Um, and, and one of my 12 sort of food rules, and I, the word rules bothers me, but <laughs> and the first one is sit down. <laughs> sit down. You know, not in your car, <laughs> right? Sit down. Maybe it's the beach. Maybe it's a rock. Maybe it's under a tree. But please, a, a chair, good. A table, good. Sit down. And when, when I was bringing my children up, the, as I said a little while ago, my 15 minute meal prep was, I 
felt like I was failing as a parent if my kids didn't sit down to a dinner every night with me, which, you know, okay, well, maybe that wasn't such a prize, but they, so, and there were three rowdy kids and they were all about the same age. I mean, literally they were three years apart and um, they, they always helped with the prep. They had to help set the table and help clear the table, which is another thing that's getting lost now. Everyone's got their phones, but nobody mm. knows how to load the dishwasher. Nobody seems to understand that you don't ever get up from the table without taking your plate. So when I say culture, I'm just talking about basic. And I mean, I could be living in a yurt and it would be the same thing. It's how the family participates in this essential ritual every day of eating together how we respect each other and honor each other and learn how to take turns talking and asking. I know people who don't know how to have a conversation because they didn't mm. grow up having a conversation. That's so sad. Well, it's not too late. I, I do think it, when people become aware of it um, and maybe this whole COVID thing has you know, brought more of us home more of us thinking in terms of, wow, look at this, right? <laughs> Home, oh, it's a thing. Maybe, maybe it's more important than I thought it was. And, and so, especially women driving all the time, Ooh. making ourselves nuts in the car, taking the kids from Mandarin to you know, baseball, to uh, ballet, to everything. Is that more important than family? Is that more important than good health? Mm. And again, you, you cannot, you can't choose. I don't care how many times you go and work out with that little perky thing. You cannot have good health without the sleep, the food and the movement all together and the community. Community is health. Don't you agree? I do agree. I think it's so important. And I talk about that a lot with my people because it's one of those pillars that everything comes back to. Even if you're trying yes. to lose weight, it all comes back to the same thing. If you want to balance your hormones, it all comes back to the same thing. It's like we were saying that word that we don't particularly like, but a healthy lifestyle I mean, it, it, is, it is a lifestyle, it's a way of life that we should be engaging in to really maximize our health. We, we know from looking at you that you've stayed healthy despite your diabetes, you've learned how to um, do what you need to do to stay healthy, to stay vibrant, to stay young looking. And I think that we all deserve to have that long, healthy life and to feel healthy and well while we're living it. Another thing that I talk about, I think the thing that started me on my path is my mother had a chronic disease. Uh, my mother died when I was 18. Mm. And um, she, it was a, a kidney disease that at the time there was really nothing. It wasn't no fault of hers, nothing that could be done really. But I learned young what chronic disease does to a family. It ruins a family financially it ruins a family emotionally. And so when I say to your clients and, and my listeners, I, I want you to test for diabetes now. I want you to understand as soon as you can, if you are at risk for diabetes or heart disease, what are those numbers? Because you, you may not feel it. You, there, there aren't any, any symptoms. You're not gonna suddenly be getting dizzy or whatever but those chronic diseases are at work. And by the time they are obvious, you've already given up your health to a great extent. And I don't want you to do that. I don't, I don't think you want to do that. If you really think about what it means to literally give up your health, if you don't have your health, what's left? You know, yes, you have family and so on, but you're, 
you become an obligation, you become a, a difficulty, you become a problem for, for yourself and other people. And let's not even talk about the healthcare system in this country <laughs> and, and the expense of it and the difficulty of it. Let's not go there, we don't need to. If you think for just a few minutes, if, if I say to you, would you choose to be 75 and annoying a lot of people and perky and happy? Or would you choose to be 75 struggling every day with pain, with uh, anxiety, with, with the inability to move well, with, uh, you know, name all those things. Which one would you choose? And it is to a very great extent, Lynn, I'm preaching to the choir here, I know, but it is up to you. Yeah. It's entirely up to you. So um, I, I want everybody to have my book. <laughs> I will most definitely. I wish I could just it. give them away. Yeah, I will definitely drop the link in the show notes. And like you and I were talking about, you know, we've got things coming up like um, Halloween. Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, right around the corner. This is just a perfect time to get a copy for somebody else to share it with them because that old saying, health is wealth, it most certainly is. It's the it most is wealth. Absolutely. Something like 85, 90% of the bankruptcies in this country are because of chronic disease, ill health. Mm. And I, uh, that's a stunning stunning statistic yes and i think it just yes. hasn't hit home with people it's like no that's not going to be me well look at the odds <laughs> you know the odds are against you so yes it's a decision you make to protect your family and your your finances and your your equity all of it um has to do with how you care for yourself well then thank you i appreciate you being on with us today and I will most definitely drop all of your links in the show notes and um, I'm excited to get the book and looked at because for me I know I've got a lot of recipes for the healthy versions of things and I'm always looking for new ones and I can't wait to try the lemon curd so that's, that's you're gonna awesome. love the lemon curd I promise yeah. you and thank you. And I love it when people make the recipes and then post pictures or send you pictures, whatever. It's a it's a, a fun way to share and have some community as we all try and do better. Yeah. Thanks. Have a great thank day you. and we'll chat later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.